Um, so for this last one, what I just want to make sure that we have, um, this one says, here's the polynomial. I'm giving you two factors. Find the remaining zeros. Now, a lot of students um, went pretty far with this. And they say, oh, well, if I have factors, I can test those factors. Well, if those are factors, actually, if those are factors, I know if I rewrite them as zeros, then they're going to divide evenly into the polynomial, right? If I say, hey, here's the factors, we know that those factors evenly divide into the polynomial. Now, I don't really want to use long division. So what I could do is, again, I can take my factor, set it equal to 0 to find the 0. Then I can apply synthetic division to help me find the remaining factors. So again, I take the coefficients of each of my terms. All right, and then I apply synthetic division. I bring down the 8. 8 times negative 2 is a uh, negative 16. This becomes a negative 30. Uh, negative 30 times negative 2 is going to be a positive 60. That becomes a negative 11. Negative 11 times 2 uh, times negative 11 is a 22. That becomes a positive 12. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24 which is a 0, right? It has to be a remainder of 0. If you didn't get a remainder of 0, you should have stopped and not gone any further and double checked your work. And I saw a lot of students that kept on going on and on. If, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a remainder, then that's not a factor. And if the, so you might want to check, Sarah, did you write down the right, did you write down the right question or number? Because I'm telling you, this is a factor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a polynomial that's in 0, constant, linear, quadratic, and cubic. That's a big polynomial. There's not a lot of cubic functions that I want to factor or to find the remaining zeros for. So to do this further, uh, they're giving us two factors. So now I can take my other factor, which would be a positive 4, and I can apply synthetic division again to it. But rather than using my original problem, I want to remember our whole goal is to factor this all the way down. So therefore, I'm going to take the coefficients of my quotient. So I do 8, negative 30, negative 11, and 12. So now I bring down the 8. 8 times 4 is 32. This becomes 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 3. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, which is a 0. Now, to write my final quotient, which is 0, constant, linear, quadratic. So therefore, I have x plus 2 times x minus 4 times 8x squared plus 2x minus 3. Those are the factors so far that we have. These are the factors that were given. And when we applied synthetic division twice, we got this last remaining factor. But can we factor this further? Yeah, we can go and take a look at it. We can at least try it. So Adara, when you're writing this one down, um, what you're going to do now is we can break this apart into say, all right, well, how can I break this into two numbers that are going to multiply to give me 8, and then two numbers that are going to multiply to give me negative 3. Now, notice, again, to multiply to give me negative 3, one of those numbers has to be negative, right? Your factors of 3 have to be negative. So um, I'm going to get an M on this. I forget. Uh, it's just to save time. 4x plus 3, 2x. All right, so let's double check to make sure that works. Um, 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 3 times negative 3 is negative 3. Uh, 3 times 2x is going to be 6x. And then negative 1 times 4 is negative 4x. 6x minus 4x is 2x. So yes, that works. So therefore, it says find the remaining zeros. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see I've now written these as a product of linear factors. So to find the zeros, you could set all those factors because this times this times this times this equals that. And if you set them equal to 0, now you can find all the remaining zeros. So you could say x equals negative 2, 4, negative 3 fourths, and positive 1 half by applying the zero product property set in each one of those equal to 0.